All right, we own page, um, this is going to be page 43 of the um, paper administration manual. So on page 43, the, this is called the none test activities. So none test activities for testing. And the introduction to none test activities. So none test activities consists of three parts. Test coordinators preparing answer documents. Examinees completing the none test information online in MyACT. And examinees completing answer document demographics must be completed before testing begins. So we're going to look at the first bullet, test coordinators preparing answer documents. And we're going to look at the last bullet, examinees completing answer documents uh, demographics and must be completed before testing begins. All right, so let's talk about preparing the answer documents. Introduction. This section provides instructions to prepare answer documents for the demographic ses section, uh, session, procedures for locating the student code, instructions for applying barcode labels, and the importance of examinees completing blocks A through G on the answer document. Student code block J. The student code is unique to identifying is the unique identifying number given to each student. The student code is printed on the barcode labels, the first nine digits under the barcode, and is assigned when the student record is created in Pearson Access Next. If a student does not have a barcode label, the student code must be manually gridded in block J on the answer document. So let's go ahead and look at the answer document so you'll see what, what block J looks like. All right, so here's the answer document. So let's go to block J. And so block J is going to be on that second page, on the back page rather. And so here's block J. So you're going to use block J if the student does not have a barcode label. So notice what it says. If the student has a student code and there's no barcode label, enter the student's code here and fill in the ovals. All right, so remember there's no barcode label. You have to complete the uh, student code. All right, remember to get the to get the student uh, ACT student code for the student, you're going to have to go to PA next. And the instructions are listed in the manual. All right, so here's how you can locate the student code. So you're going to log into Pearson Access next. And number two, under the setup tab, select students. And three, on the student screen, enter the examinee's last name in the find students field and then press enter. The nine digit student code appears in the first column to the left of the examinee's last name. So that's how you're going to get the student code. You're going to get that from PA Next, and these are the steps. All right, barcode labels. So when you received your boxes, your materials, all of you had barcode labels for every student, um, whether the student was taking the test online or paper based. It did not matter. You got a barcode label. So ACT will provide barcode labels if, if examining information is in Pearson Access Next by the Verify Enrollment Deadline. Each label contains an examinee's identifying data such as name, student code, and the school information. It is important to use a barcode label on the examinee's answer document to ensure data integrity for scoring purposes. Important. All answer documents, even those with a barcode label, must have blocks A through G completed for scores to be reported. Missing information will cause a delay in scoring. So I'm back at the answer document, and so let's look at, at um, A through G. So notice right here it says important. Blocks uh, complete blocks A through G in their entirety to receive a score report. So they're telling the student this. So uh, 
uh, part A is where the student indicates their name and the mailing address, and it is required. And it says, do not place label here. So the barcode label goes here. See where, where it's being pointed, barcode label placement. If a label is being used, please place it inside the four corner, uh, the four corner marks below. All right, so a name and mailing address is required for, for uh, block A. All right, so notice last name, first name, um, the house number and street address, the city, state, and zip code. Block B, name, all names must, uh, all examinees must enter their names and fill in the corresponding ovals. So they're going to put their last name and first name, and if they want to put their middle initial, they can. So that's blocks A and B. On the last page of the answer document is block C, which is their mailing address. And notice it says, leave a space between parts of your address. Use the forward slash mark oval for fractions such as one half. D, city, it says, do not enter your state in this block. So make sure they put the city there. The state abbreviation. So that's blocks C, D, and E. Block F is a zip code, and block G is the date of birth. Okay, so no other information is needed. Block H and I will, will be used in the My ACT account. So all they need, remember, is blocks A through G. A through G. Remember, A through G must be completed in order for students to receive a score report. All right, so this is what a barcode label looks like. Well, I should say a sample barcode label. Um, so notice when you get the barcode label, you're going to see, you're definitely going to see the last name. You're going to see the first name, um, their grade, date of birth, their high school code the high school name, the district code, and also around here, you're going to see their um, ID code. But the district name will appear here, and here's the barcode right here, or, or the, the um, I forgot what they call this. I guess we'll just call it the barcode, right? And right under that is going to be their ACT code. So that, that's, that's that ACT code. If a student doesn't have a barcode label, you would get that in PA next, and it would be these digits that would appear here if they did have a barcode label. All right, so note your barcode labels might not contain the same data nor appear in the same format as the sample shown. So, and, and the ones that you're going to see will not. There's also going to be an ID number as well um, and a, one or more information that looks a little bit different. All right, but the first thing you want to do when you get the barcode labels that, that are going to be used on the student uh, answer documents, you're not going to do that for online. You're only, you're only going to do that for students taking paper testing, uh, paper-based test. Um, but the first thing you need to do is check information on the barcode labels. Determine whether the information printed on the barcode label is accurate. Part A, if the student code is correct, apply the barcode label to the answer document. If the student code is incorrect, do not apply the barcode label to the answer document. Securely destroy incorrect barcode labels and manually grid the correct student code in block J on the answer document. Note, use the barcode label if the student code is correct, even if other student data is not correct. You should correct the other student data in, peer, in PA Next prior to test day. All right, so remember, use the barcode label if the student code is correct, even if other student data is not correct. You can go to PA Next to um, correct the other student information prior to test day. All right, so let's talk about applying the barcode labels. Look for the shaded area mark barcode label placement on the appropriate section of the answer document. Affix the label in this area only. Note, do not place the label in any other location on the answer document. And then barcode label placement, if a label is available, please place it inside the four corner marks shown to the left. So let's go to the answer document. 
And remember, that's going to be on that front page of the answer document. And so this is it right here. All right, so that's where you're going to put the barcode label. It's right next to block B. Okay. And remember, if you don't have a barcode label, what you have to do, you have to go to PA Next, get the student ACT code, and you're going to have to manually put this, put, you have to manually grid the student code for each examinee in block J. All right, we're not going to do the high school code because all, all the students taking the test at your school will uh, be students at your school. So uh, we're not even going to do block K. All right. All right, so again, we're not going to complete block K, so we're not going to do any of this right here. So we're going to skip that information. We're also not going to do anything with block L. You're not going to put the local student ID number here, not even the LICIT. All right, so remember the, the uh, ACT student code is linked to the LICIT. So you're not going to put the LICIT. You're not going to put the local student ID at all. All right, so you're not going to complete block L. Do not complete block L. All right, so examinee transfers. Number one, if an examinee transfers into your school, determine your steps from the table. Now, remember, we, we're looking at, at paper-based testing, so these are accommodations. So if an examinee transfers into your school, determine your steps from the following tables. Let's look at the table. If the examinee transfers prior to testing and there is no barcode label, then A, add the examinee following the add or remove student process in PA Next user guide. B, grid the examinee student code from PA Next in block J. Prior to testing and already finished testing at their former school. Do not submit an answer document and do not schedule examinee for testing. At the time of testing and cannot be set up in time to test. Schedule the examinee for makeup testing if available. Add the examinees, uh, add the examinee following the add or remove students process in PA Next user guide and grid the examinee student code from PA Next in Block J. Number two, if the examinee transfers out of your school prior to testing, if the barcode label has not been applied to an answer, answer document, securely destroy the barcode label. If the barcode label has been applied to an answer document or any demographic portions were completed, keep the answer document for six months, then securely destroy. All right, so uh, the next section in, in that part talks about completing the non-test information online in MyCT, so students are going to complete this. So um, some of you may be doing this during school day. Some of you may be doing it after school. Some of you may be asking students to do this on their own at home. Um, but again, they can be done at home. You got all the information you need from uh, for students to do this in your materials box. All right, so we're on page 50, and this is where we're going to start, again, uh, continue talking about completing the answer document. Um, so introduction. Prior to testing, allow time for examinees to personally complete answer document demographics. This can be done in an in-school session before test day, or this can be done on test day prior to testing, uh, starting test one. This cannot be completed after test day. All right, so remember, if a student is taking the paper version, a uh, paper test, you can do the, you, you can have the students complete the um, answer document demographics. Now, remember what I mean by that. So the answer document demographics is this. Remember, they have to complete block A, block B, block C, D, E, and then F and G. So that's what I'm talking about. So you can have them do this um, prior to testing, or you can have them do this the morning of testing before starting test one. But remember, before, before you let them do this, it is important that you put their barcode label, they have one, before they do this, they need you need to have their barcode label here. And also, if they don't have that barcode label, you need to make sure that 
that their student code is in block J. Okay. All right. So let's continue talking. So the next part says this, follow the verbal instructions for answer document demographics along with your administration supplement if, if applicable to guide examinees through the process. Note, if you choose to complete the answer document demographics on test day, you will need to return to this section to read the verbal instructions for answer document demographics. Sessions for examinees with accommodation supports, which is what we're doing here. Examinees testing with accommodations and supports may complete the information during the same session as other examinees or in separate sessions. The test coordinator is responsible for administ administration arrangements. So in other words, if you do this before test day, like let's say the day before or a week before, you can bring, uh, you, you can mix the uh, uh, other timing codes, uh, standard time rather, with, with uh, uh, students that are testing with accommodations to complete uh, blocks A through G. But uh, if you're doing it the morning of test, then you cannot do that because the students will be in their uh, class to take test one. Um, but that's what this is saying. All right, so just like we talked about the required fields, so these are the required fields. Basic identifying information and mailing addresses, front and back pages are required for all examinees. At a minimum, examinees must complete the following blocks, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These blocks must be completed accurately for scores to be reported. Okay, now let's talk about the verbal instructions. All right, so, so if, now there are some of you that are going to do this for years for the students. So let's say you only have three students, let's say, that are taking the test um, paper base. It, you may want to just just uh, bubble in the student's information, the mailing address and so forth, blocks A through through uh, G. But if you have quite a few, then it's not feasible for you to do that for every student. So you have to bring them in either uh, a week before or three days before, whatever it may be. So, so you got to think about how you're going to get students to complete the, the answer document demographics. If you do it the, the morning of, it will take about 10 minutes or so for you to go through the process. But regardless, regardless, if you have them do it before test or the morning of, remember, you cannot do it after test. After they've completed testing, you cannot do this. You must have them or you will need to complete the, the demographics um, before they start test one. But here are the instructions. So the instructions are on page 51. 51. All right, number one, read aloud all instructions in the shaded boxes. Do not depart from this text. When reading the instructions, pause after each series of dots to give examinees time to follow instructions. Two, begin by saying, you will now complete the demographics portion of your answer document. Three, begin distributing the answer documents, then say, as I hand you an answer document, your name should appear on the label at the left of the front page. Raise your hand if you do not receive your own answer document. And then number four, resolve any discrepancies in answer document identification before continuing. Number five, continue by saying, Place your answer documents so that page one faces you. Complete the requested information in blocks A and B. Put one letter in each box and fill in the corresponding oval. Even if your document has a barcode label, you must fill in blocks A and B completely and accurately. If you have a question, raise your hand. When you have completed blocks A and B, Put your pencil down and look up. So then give them time to do this. So after, after a while, um, when, when all of them have looked up, then you continue with number six. So here's number six. Give, examinee, uh, give everyone enough time to complete blocks A and B. When everyone is finished, continue by saying, now turn your answer document over to the back page and complete blocks C through, and it says I, but, but you remember 
Um, they have to complete through G. Now, you, you can have a complete I. So let's see what I is. Remember, I is, is um, well, where is I? Uh, H, there it is. So I is the race, ethnicity, background. All right, so so you can tell them, like it says, go th from um, uh, A through G, and then H is the gender. Um, so they can say female, male, another gender, or prefer not to respond. But at a minimum, remember, at a minimum, they have to complete blocks A through G. Okay? So if you want to have them go and do H and I, that's fine. All right, so let's go back and talk about this. All right, to receive your score report in the mail, you must fill the address ovals correctly. In block C, enter each part of the address where you receive mail. Leave a space between the parts of your street address. Use the slash forward to designate fractions such as one half, three fourths. If you live in an apartment, enter the apartment number after the street name. When you have completed block C through I, put your pencil down and look up. Number seven, move around the room to make sure examinees are completing blocks C through I. And then important, important, all answered documents, even those with a barcode label, must have blocks A through G completed for scores to be reported. Missing information will cause a delay in scoring. All right, number eight, when everyone has completed block C through I, say, skip Skip blocks J and K, turn your answer document to page two, and look at email address. If you have an email address and choose to provide one, it will be used in accordance with the ACT privacy policy and included on score reports to colleges. Make sure you enter all letters, numbers, and symbols of your email address using the key provided on your answer document and fill in the corresponding oval between each block. Number nine, Give everyone enough time to complete the email address block. Number 10, if your school or district assigns, okay, we're not going to do 10, so we don't do 10. Um, so you, no one's going to fill in block L. Um, no one's going to fill in block M. Okay, so you skip 11. And then number 12, if you have examinees completing the, uh, the, completing the answer document demographics on test day, continue to the verbal instructions. All right. Um, so, uh, some of you may or may not continue to the verbal instructions. Some of you may be doing this prior to test day. Some of you may be doing this the morning of test day. All right. But remember, you can once the student finishes the test, you cannot go back and have them do this because because uh, the answer document will then have answers already on them. So you cannot you, you once this this part must must be completed before they start test one. All right, conclude the answer document demographic session. If you have examinees complete the answer document demographic prior to test day, do the following. You're going to collect the answer documents individually from each student. Collect the answer documents in an order that will ensure examinees receive their own answer documents on test day. Make sure the required fields have been completely gridded on the front and back pages of each answer document. Room supervisors return the answer documents to the test coordinator who then stores all partially completed answer documents in secure storage until test day. Inform examinees to report to test site at the time and location you designate. Bring the following items on test day. Acceptable photo identification. Number two, pencils with good erasers. No mechanical pencils or ink pens. A permitted calculator. Do not bring cell phones or any electronic devices, scratch paper, notes, reading materials, or any unauthorized testing aids. So remember, online, you're going to give them scratch paper. All right. So for paper testing, they're going to do their work in the book. So do not give them scratch paper for paper testing. All right. So remember, do not, they're not to bring cell phones or any electronic devices, scratch paper, 
notes, reading materials, or any unauthorized testing aids. There's enough room on the page of each on each page of the test book for them to do scratch work. Okay. All right. So only online students get scratch paper. Um, all right. So let's look at the next page. And that's it. So so you you're done with the answer document. OK, so that is the end of the section dealing with completing the answer document.